Hey everybody, welcome to Cinema Sound. Today we're going to be looking at another great plugin from Adobe Audition that we use in post all the time, and that's the Dynamics processor, which is kind of a new processor. Hasn't been around all that long, really since the end of 2018. Let's dive in. All right, we're in Adobe Audition. And if you've never opened Adobe Audition, I strongly invite you to come to our website, cinemasound.com, and stream the Adobe Audition 123 product, which takes you from, I don't know what to do with it, I've never used it, to I'm making great results, and I love using Adobe Audition to get great results from the department of the redundancy department. All right, but we're here. We have three clips in the timeline. One is a gunshot. <laughs> For nine millimeter, the next is some dialogue, female dialogue. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons, but the D7 changed all that. And some really bad dialogue as well. When Julian Hernandez was trying to apply for college, he unearthed a secret that would change his life forever. He had been missing for 12 years. Bummer. All right, so uh, what most people do in an online new editor is they go to the arrow tool, and they click on any of these clips and they apply their plugins, which you can do. Just again, click on a clip, go to effects and then select any one of these that you want. Or you can go to the effects rack over here, click on clip effects and then instantiate the plugin that you want. But we want this to be applied to all of the clips in a track. So we go to track effects here and that will allow us to put on these clips everything that we put in the tracks uh, effects rack. So we're gonna to go to amplitude and compression and dynamics. Now immediately you can see that this Audition plugin is quite a bit different than any other Audition plugin or plugins we've seen for a while here. And that is that it has a suite of sub plugins, an auto gate, compressor, expander, and limiter, which all sort of work in series, which is very nice. Let's just start with the auto gate. An auto gate is a really cool thing that allows the signal to pass through the channel as long as it's loud enough, but then closes off or turns the channel off, if you will, if it's not loud enough. Check it out here on the dialog. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Now the red light means it's closed. The yellow light means it's the audio's gotten too low, but it's holding for a second. And then the green means it's loud enough. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... So when she's not speaking, it's dead closed. And we can control what volume... Uh, it opens and closes on with the threshold. So if I turn this all the way down to minus 60... We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Even the noise in the channel is loud enough to keep it open. But if I bring it all the way up to, say, minus 3... We'd proven we could... Only the loudest bits open it. So we want to find a general nice place that it stays open for the general nice dialogue. We'd proven we could take on the Klingon. Let's try 25. We'd proven we could take on the Klingon. Maybe even 30. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Just maybe even 35. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. Good. And then the attack is how fast does the gate open? If you make it really slow... We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. It kind of swooshes in and you might miss some of those opening consonants. We want to keep it not at 0.1 maybe, but somewhere here at 0.2 milliseconds. Releases how fast does it shut down. If you make it too fast, well actually this only goes down to 50 milliseconds, which is probably a great setting. And then how long does the gate stay open after the sound comes below the level? We'd proven we could take on the Klingons which is not very long. Let's try 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second. And you'll see this yellow light go on for about a tenth of a second after she'd stopped We'd speaking. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... And you can hear her breath... D7... ...getting cut off. Whereas if we turn the hold off... D7... ...gets immediately cut off. Seven. No breath there at the end at all. Seven. And with it on... Seven. You can hear... Seven. And then it gets cut off, and then with it off. Seven. And these are the kinds of artifacts we want to be careful about cutting off when we're using an auto gate. So that's the general use there. You can um, hear it here with the bad audio. When Julian Hernandez was trying... If we bring the threshold up. When Julian Hernandez was trying to apply for college, he unearthed a secret that would change his life forever. So that's the auto gate. The expander is very much sort of the same thing, only instead of being on off hard, it sort of slopes on and slopes, uh, slopes off, I should say, in a way that's a little bit nicer. And you have the same threshold, which we can keep here, but then a ratio instead of just, you know, these attack settings. When Julian Hernandez was trying to... Let's make the ratio two. When Julian Hernandez was trying to apply for college, 
you know, hear how it doesn't quite bring it all the way down, which can be useful, especially if you've got, you know, a difficult thing to, to, to manage, you know, is it too loud? Is it too soft? Is it right on the threshold? What do I want to happen here? When Julian Hernandez was trying to apply for college, he unearthed a secret that would change his life forever. He had been missing. When Julian Hernandez was trying to apply for college, he unearthed a secret that would change his life forever. And you can continue to massage that to create great results. But over here on the good dialogue, we'd proven we could take on the Klingons. You can really get in there and, you know, in between syllables and breaks and cut them off. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. Kills her, all of her breaths, all of the lip smackiness and everything else really, really nicely. And all the room tone, of course. All right, let's take a look at the compressor, which is pretty normal. We have a lot of videos on compression and even on the multi-band and the single band and the tube model compressor here from Audition. But this is the built-in one in the Dynamics. So how a compressor works is it disallows a signal to go over a threshold, sort of the opposite of a gate or an expander. So as it goes over this threshold, it's brought lower and lower and lower. And we control that threshold, obviously, here. And let's the ratio is how much of the signal gets reduced by a fraction. So a two ratio means it's anything that goes over that threshold is being cut in half. A three is cut into a third. A four is cut into a quarter. And a fifth and so on and so on. Until you get out to, you know, in this case, an eighth, which is a lot of compression. So let's just start with a three or so to one. And let's use this gunshot. Reminding you what it sounds like without. Very cracky, you know. And you hear this beautiful tail off. Turning the compressor back on. Now I have a zero a millisecond, oh, point, there we go, 0.1 millisecond attack, which means anything that's super transient is going to get definitely adjusted by this threshold. And then a pretty fast release. Makeup has nothing to do with what you put on your face, but rather how much of this will you bring back? Because what we're doing is reducing the volume. So let's bring it up about six decibels. Maybe even more. And you can see by this red line, these red lines here are all about attenuation. How much is it bringing down? Now watch what happens if I change the attack and make the attack 10 milliseconds. You hear the attack is all of a sudden punchy. There's a pow to it. And if we make the release very short, as opposed to no attack, See how it's just not the same? And if we make the release extremely long, it tends to want to cut down on, that re, uh, on the release of the actual sound. Reminding you what it's like without. It's just kind of that attack and a short decay. But with the compressor on, a short attack, and we'll make the release short too. It takes out that transient and extends... We've that, proven we that release. The last one is the limiter. Limiter is pretty simple. It disallows. It's like a compressor, but superpower. Nothing gets over the threshold. We'll set the threshold really low here and the release very fast to a 10 millisecond release. And that red light means it's attenuating. That's way too low. So now it's just crushing everything. We'll do a big makeup gain. Oh, I guess the makeup only works for compression. There we go. Now notice what happens if I use the expander. It cuts off that release. In fact, let's make the threshold even higher. Pretty cool. Watch what happens with the auto gain, auto gate. Let's make this go up here. So it just cut, 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 cut. It's just trying to cut everything out, whereas the expander tries to kind of smooth it. Now, if we use all of these together, on this, we get the limiter. Well, maybe not the expand. Let's use the compressor and the limiter together. You actually hear the attack come down when you put them together. And then it expands up that delay, that decay, which is pretty cool. Let's use the compressor now um, and the limiter. We'll leave the limiter. Normally, you would use this limiter to keep something from going over zero, say on a master channel or whatever. Let's listen, let's listen to it here on this good dialogue. 
we'd proven we could take on the Klingons. And what you can do with a short attack is just kind of sear off any transients that might get too loud, but also balance the overall dialogue. Notice how much quieter this line is than this one in the waveform. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. Notice how nice that is. And if I turn it off? We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. See how quiet that third line is and with it on again? We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. Nice. Now you can also hear a bunch of people moving around in the background and all kinds of other things, which is where we would use that expander to automatically cut that stuff off. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. And let's bring this back down to a reasonable setting. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Even more. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. Now we're kind of messing around with our breath. Let's go a little bit lower. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. Very nice. And uh, so expander compression and then limiter we would use if we really wanted to make this loud and make sure it wasn't getting too loud so we can bring the makeup gain way up. We'd proven we could take on the Klingon. Now look at these meters down here, which will show you whether or not it's going over zero. Go here. We'd, Oops. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. So that's pretty cool. We get it super loud and nice and balanced as well as no extra noise. And when you use a lot of compression or limiting, you're cutting off the high loud sounds, but you're also bringing up the noise floor in the process. So having a compressor and an expander or an auto gate uh, is a really great idea. That is a really nice combination and keeps you from having to do, you know, passes like uh, using denoise or something like this, which would add more artifacts. If this video has been of value to you or you've seen any of the other hundreds of other videos we have here on the Cinema Sound channel, please subscribe to this channel and come see us at cinemasound.com. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you